Let's have a look what we got here. Oh, oh I've already got some. Yeah. Pearl. Whatever. Same thing. Dirty. Mr. Moots. Ah. Ugh. Uh, you can see, uh, this is waxed. Look at that, beautiful. Let's try this one. Ah, oh, that's bad. Uh, I haven't got many fingers left, let's try this one. Look at that. And 102 Ks. Done 102 Ks. Just finished the ride. Beautiful. It's like pristine. Oh, I've got wet on it. Look at that, nothing on it. Oh, there you've got to get something off that. Hardly. Which is the uh, nice titanium frame. There you go, so if you've got a titanium frame, you've got to wax your chain and have it nice and shiny to match. <laughs> So there you go, wax chain gathers virtually no dirt whatsoever. While all the others, whether it starts off red, blue, green, white, clear, thick or thin, it all ends up going black. And what's that black? It's dirt mixed with the lubricant. So in this video, let's see why and how to clean your chain and how to keep it that way. Your bicycle chain is a moving mechanical part, like the bearings. However, unlike bearings, a chain has many more moving parts. At a nominal 90 revs per minute, there will be 30,000 link movements. And taking a closer look, you see each link is made up of many parts. These parts articulate against each other and so require lubrication. All up, there are 200,000 individual moving surfaces per minute that need to be lubricated. Even though a chain is not covered, the lubricated parts are not visible because they are enclosed inside the chain links. The only lubrication you may see is on the edges of the link plates, as shown here in red. Any excess lubricant on the outside of a chain will only attract foreign matter, like dirt. Even a freshly cleaned and lubricated chain will attract foreign matter if just a thin film of lubricant is left on the outside of a chain. It's vital to have a properly lubricated bike chain for many reasons. First of all, it'll protect your whole drivetrain's life, so it'll save you big dollars in the long run. Secondly, it'll enable more efficient gear changing. Thirdly, it minimises friction, so it'll be about saving power, which is what it's about these days. And lastly, it safeguards the chain against any corrosion. The key to good bicycle chain lubrication is the clean. Cleaning the chain properly enables the lubricant to stick to the metal that the chain is made of. For this reason, mixing lubricants is not recommended. There are incompatibility issues. Identify the base of the lubricant. Is it synthetic, vegetable oil or mineral oil based? Switching between these bases causes problems. For instance, it will decrease the beneficial properties of the lubricant that you're adding. It will also decrease the anti-wear properties that that lubricant has. It will increase the oxidisation of the metal that it's supposed to be protecting and also there can be differences in thicknesses of the lubricant and that will decrease the efficiency of the lubricant doing its job properly as well. For instance, most brand new chains come with a factory lubricant in them. 
So you either stick to what the manufacturer recommends for a lubrication, or you completely strip out the factory lubricant and start anew. Here's a brief demonstration of why mixing lubricants doesn't work, but having a perfectly clean surface to start with and using just one type of lubricant is best. We'll spray one knife with WD-40, dip them both in hot wax and then let them cool down. With the clean knife you can see the wax has well and truly adhered to the clean metal surface. With this knife the WD-40 formed an oily film on the metal preventing the wax from adhering at all. Back to the clean knife and you can see the wax is well and truly stuck on that clean metal surface. And that's how you want a lubricant to stick to the inside of your chain. Unlike bearings, your chain is completely exposed to the outside environment. So dirt and dust, and then when it rains, all that flicks up from your front wheel, moisture and more grit and grime, all going over and onto your chain. Well, imagine if your chain was a bearing. Let's take a bottom bracket bearing. Here's one here, nice bottom bracket bearing, nice and smooth. Now let's expose it to the environment. We take off the seals, and here it is here, you can see the bearings inside and it spins nicely so now you decide to go for your bike ride so you're riding along and it's spinning nicely and it starts to rain a bit of moisture of course not just water here's a glass of nice clean dirt <laughs> put some on oh. <laughs> and you decide to keep riding because it's an 80 kilometer bike ride so you're riding and riding along now, how's your bearings going to be? Are they going to be nice and smooth, or are they going to be full of high wear and high friction? Well, you finish your 80 kilometer bike ride, and you get home, and you decide, I think I'm going to give it a clean. So, spray it with your whatever cleaner you use, give it a nice clean with your brushes and your rags and whatever, and it's nice and clean on the outside. And then you decide, oh, it's a bit gritty, so I'll put some lube on. Oh. And the lubricant says cleans as it lubes. So you put that on as well, some of that. And it feels a bit better and it's a bit quieter. But really, before you even go for your next bike ride, how's your bearing? It's pretty much stuffed, isn't it? So just like this bearing, all the foreign matter, the dirt and the grime sticks to the lubricant that's on your chain. And then as your chain moves, it grinds it down finer and then it finds its way inside your chain into the rollers, pins, and bushing area of your chain. There it grinds down even finer into a grinding paste, goes to work and wears down your chain really quickly. So your chain will stretch with the wear, and then in no time, all of a sudden, your rear cassette cogs and your front chain rings are also being worn down by this stretched chain. So for this reason, your chain needs regular cleaning and re-lubrication. Simply cleaning the outside of the chain and adding more lubricant will quieten the chain and the chain will regain some of its efficiency. But all you've really done is diluted the grinding paste inside the links. So on to cleaning our chain and there are different methods and a popular one is to use one of these, a clip-on brush cleaner. So this is where the chain slides through brushes and the brushes take off the dirt from the outside of the chain combine it and dilute it with the cleaning fluid inside and then brush it back over the chain over and over and over. <laughs> it's a bit like if you take a bath in dirty water, you come out and you've got all this diluted dirt all over you anyhow. And this also doesn't do much for cleaning inside of a chain either. Next up is brushes and cleaning fluids or soapy water where you spray on the fluid and then you brush it and brush it which cleans the outside of the chain, but again, you're diluting in the muck, and quite often, this cleaning fluid will get inside the chain and contaminate the lubricant inside your links anyhow. Plus, it doesn't clean the inside of the chain where it needs to be cleaned as well. Then there's the Sonic Cleaner, and yes, it does a fairly good job of agitating the dirt off of the outside and the inside of the chain. However, it will leave some of the cleaning fluid and debris inside your chain links still. So it's a bit like trying to get clean glassware out of dirty dish water. If you do insist on using a Sonic Cleaner, what I do recommend is after you've taken it out of the Sonic Cleaner, give it a few soaks in methylated spirits to make sure it's absolutely clean. 
Last but not least, soaking in cleaning fluids. That's all very well, but again, it's like soaking in its own dirt. So you need to take it out, put it in another lot, swish it around again, agitate it, and then take it out again and keep doing so until that cleaning fluid is absolutely clear. So that means your chain is clean inside and out. But of course, you also need to make sure that you're using the correct cleaning fluid for the specific lubricant that's inside the chain as well. Well, is that just too much information? It all just sounds too hard. Well, fear not, my friends. I'm going to show you the best chain clean ever. I sound like an advert doing this, but it'll clean any lubricant and dirt off and out of any chain. It'll leave your chain spotless and even sterile. Sterile, ready for the best lubricant ever, waxing. So let's go to the workshop and I'll show you how. First thing is to make sure your chain is not too stretched. So get a chain checker and make sure it's 0.5% or less. If it is 0.5% or more, then start yourself off with a new chain. This clean requires that you remove the chain from your bike. Using a quick link makes cleaning not just your chain, but your whole drivetrain so much easier. Get yourself some plastic containers around about that size. They can be a bit smaller with some fairly good lids don't have to be airtight. Now if you use glass jars, which you can use, if you go and shake your chain too much inside, you can smash the jar and you don't want that heavy glass everywhere as well. So plastic containers are good. So two or three of them depending on the chemicals that you're going to use. In the first container we'll put some petrol in, the second container will be degreaser and the third one methylated spirits. So get the chain you're going to clean and pop it in the first container and just pour some petrol on top. That much will do. Put the lid on. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Depending on how dirty the chain is, but if it's really dirty or it's got factory lube in, then you need to leave it for probably overnight would be really good. Otherwise, five or six hours. Now put some gloves on or you can just use your hands if you want depending on what you like with petrol and a piece of wire and bend it with a little hook on so you can get the chain out. So let's push that out and then put it in the second container which of course is degreaser. So put the degreaser in there about the same amount as the petrol. lid on and shake and then let it stand for about half an hour. Half an hour has gone past, shake again, take it out. Wash out the degreaser with clean water. Give the chain a bit of a shake, get some of the water off, don't have to get it all off. Then pop it in the third container and again put the same amount but this time methylated spirits. Put it on, shake, let it stand for half an hour. Half an hour has gone past and give it another shake and then inspect it and it should be crystal clear. Just as clear as brand new methylated spirits. If it's not then you have to give it a second wash in methylated spirits. This is the second lot. Take off the lid and have a really close inspection. And this looks pretty clear. So it's ready to take out the hooky tool and hang it up to dry for a while. So using all three of these chemicals is a complete clean or the initial clean for a brand new chain. So the petrol is used to get out the heavy grease or heavy oils in the chain. It will completely strip it out. The next chemical, the degreaser, will take out any oils left in. And then the third one, the methylated spirits, will take out any slight, very thin film of oil that's left on the chain. And they'll leave the chain sterile or completely just metal. 
Now, if you want to leave out the degreaser, go just from petrol to the methylated spirit, you can. But it's recommended if you've got a brand new tank, then use all three. It'll completely clean it. Other than that, you can just use the petrol and then straight into uh, the methylated spirit a couple of times with that. But in the long run, make sure that you keep on going with the methylated spirits two, maybe even three times. And make sure it's absolutely clear and that way the chain is absolutely sterile clean. So you completely cleaned a chain and you've waxed it and you've gone for quite a few rides. After about 250 to 300 kilometres of riding, your chain's ready for a re-wax. Well, rather than go through all those three chemicals again, you don't need to. All you need to do is this. It's really simple. Get a colander or a sieve, plastic one's fine. Pop your chain in there. Boil a kettle of water. Once that's ready, get the water and slowly pour it over your chain and do that. Just shake it, agitate at the same time. And you'll find that that'll take off any bit of dirt onto the outside, not that there's much that sticks to wax, and it will clean, melt the wax off the outside of the chain, while most of the good wax will still remain inside the chain. So once it's done, take it out, it'll be hot, so just hold it up or hang it up for about 30 seconds, that's all it takes to dry because it's hot, and then just pop it straight into your hot wax pot. Done.